Hello. Hi, Governor. It's Kate from LSJ. I was just in the neighbourhood of your new house and I thought I'd come over. I've got a couple of housewarming gifts for you. Do you mind if I come in? Oh, no, that'll be wonderful. You are going to, of course, have to fight your way through security and protocol. You'll need to do that. Yes, yeah, certainly come in. Hello and welcome to our fourth episode of At The Bar. Today I'm lucky enough to be at the most beautiful government house in Sydney to interview Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, Margaret Beasley. They just grabbed my hand and they said, oh, you poor thing. Would you have called yourself a feminist then? No. What about now? Governor Beasley is perhaps best known in the legal profession as the first woman to break through a number of firsts in law. She was one of the first judges in the Federal Court of Australia to be a female. She was also the first woman to be a judge on the Court of Appeal bench in New South Wales. And she became the first president of the New South Wales Court of Appeal in 2013. She recently moved into this house, which I'll uh, admit is quite fittingly excellent. Um, and how are you finding the new digs? Governor. It's a wonderful way to get your daily exercise. It is so large. <laughs> <laughs> All the way Walk up and down the stairs. <laughs> Walking from one end to the other. Now, we call this series At The Bar because I like to bring along our, uh, my guest's favourite drink. So today I've arranged for some Madura tea to be served because that is the tea made in New South Wales That's and right. I hear it's one of your favourites. Absolutely. Um, and it's actually part of the culture of the house. There is a real emphasis on New South Wales, Governor of New South Wales. This is Government House of New South Wales. And there's a huge emphasis. And I think Governor Hurley may have been instrumental or particularly instrumental in, in promoting this, but we promote New South Wales products uh, simply by using them. So I brought you some housewarming gifts now. Obviously, you're probably well equipped with the Madura tea, but we've brought some more New South Wales tea. Excellent. And Thank I you. thought, you know, maybe. And you know, I was just getting to the bottom of the packet, so that's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. And, you know, sometimes I think maybe after five, you'd like something a little stronger. I thought you might enjoy some Sydney Dry Gin by Poor Tons, Toms. That is made in Sydney, it is a, a local gin. I quite like it. If you don't drink gin, I'll happily take it back. <laughs> but I think, you know, take that, give it to the staff. If you know, have I a little. I think so. You know, we, we do have a um, a staff afternoon uh, drinks once a month. So I think we might just uh, excellent. Share this Most lawyers recognise you as the kind of trailblazing female judge um, and you were made president of the Court of Appeal of New South Wales in 2013, so it wasn't that long ago. Does it surprise you at all that it took so long for a woman to hold that position? It's, it's been a long time for a whole lot of things to happen. Um, and you, you wonder why it has taken so long. I don't necessarily have the answers for that. No doubt there were a thousand challenges along the way to becoming president of the Court of Appeal. What were some of the ones that stick out to you? The thing that probably annoyed me most as a, as a young lawyer was I had all these barristers telling me that, um, oh dear, 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 law, dear, you know, dear, 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 if you really must become a barrister, then, oh look, there's those women who go into family law, you just go round and join them. I uh, don't bother coming to our chambers. Really? And, no. Absolutely. Only just family law for yes, women? Yes, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And I didn't want to do family law. Uh, you know, I wanted to do the commercial law subjects, yeah. the equity subjects that I really loved at law school. Yeah, so for you personally, you're a mother, you, you were a silk, you were a judge, you're now governor. What were some of the hardest things you had to overcome in your career? Workload. Yeah. Workload is, is big. Um, I used to have a saying, people would say, oh, how do you manage it all? And I would say, uh, look, just so long as the peanut butter went between the you know, slices of the bread and not between the pages of the judgment, yep. I figured I was ahead. <laughs> as the only woman on your floor in chambers as a barrister and as one of the few female judges um, during your judicial career, did you ever experience or see harassment or bullying going on? So in my chambers 
And in my judicial career, no. Never? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, I'm talking about within my chambers, yeah. okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my, my chambers colleagues, there was no sexual harassment. Uh, within the court, no sexual harassment. Uh, as I said, one of the things I found in the court was a, this sort of great, uh, great sense of combination of welcome, but also of equality, mm. which I think within that construct, what is very, very important is um, equal pay. Definitely. All judges are on the same pay. Um, there's a slight sort of difference between the Chief Justice and the President of the Court of Appeal. But apart from that, you're all there, you're all to do a job, you're all being paid the same. Yeah. And that's, I think that actually has a very significant impact on the ethos because... Hugely. Yes. I know you actually um, graduated university in, and one of the few women who would have studied law at that time in the same year that uh, Germaine Greer published her landmark feminist book, The Female Eunuch. At that time, feminist was a sort of dirty word and would you have called yourself a feminist then? No. What about now? No. Still not a feminist? No. And why not? Because I think that I have a right and an entitlement to do what I want to do according to my ability. And that's what I've always done. I've just, I, I, I talk to, you know, a lot of uh, young people in this sense, you know, be a doer. Yes. Go ahead, you know, do what you want to do. Don't worry about gender. Yeah. It's I, never been a barrier for you. I'm sure it was a barrier, mm -hmm. but um, my approach was to go and do it regardless. Yes. Now, does that make you a feminist? I don't know. I've, I don't have a background in feminist theory. Okay. And I think that is really quite separate. So, Governor, I actually wore a, a special outfit today, <laughs> speaking of feminists, um, and this is a red pantsuit that I bought in your honour. Your Excellency, uh, can you tell us the story of when you wore a red pantsuit at a special occasion? It wasn't a special occasion. It was, uh, look, I, I don't mind the, pro the silent protest. Okay. All right. And sometimes you've got to have more than a silent protest. I don't, um, I don't decry uh, people who take a stance on things, but I think you do have to be very careful. Uh, to pick your moment. To pick your moment. So um, I had heard when I first commenced in the Court of Appeal, that there was a judge who uh, wouldn't let his staff wear pants or pantsuit to work. His female staff. Yes. Yeah, he was all right with the boys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, and because he didn't approve of women in wearing pantsuits. And I thought, well, bugger that, if you excuse my expression. <laughs> uh, you know, pe people don't tell you what to wear. Mm. Um, people don't tell you what to do. I mean, coming back to what barriers I had, this particular judge didn't present that barrier to me, but I knew that was his attitude. So I thought, well, I'll just make my statement. Very first judges meeting, I will wear a red pantsuit. And that's what I did. No comment was made yeah. and no comment should have been made. Now, we always finish our interviews at this series with a few quick questions that you can pass judgment on. Um, so think back to when you were a judge not that long ago uh, and use those skills. We started as a bit of a game with former High Court Judge Michael Kirby. Um, no one can match Michael <laughs> Kirby on anything. <laughs> I don't know, you give him a good run. It's really caught on. Anyway, I've got a few props here. All you have to do is hold up a paddle. So you hold up a red paddle if you're in, a, in dissent, if you want to give a dissenting judgment, and <laughs> the green paddle is if you agree. So you can just hold up a paddle. Um, so let's have a practice question. Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Correct answer, Your Excellency. I think it's a, just a disgrace to put it on there. Okay, real question. Are women and minorities treated equally and fairly in the legal profession today? Well, I'm, the answer is no. No. So, so that would be... <laughs> I made that tough. Yes, you really, did. No. Um, okay. Should law firms, courts and the bar have specific diversity quotas, not just targets, but quotas for diversity? I'm, I'm a fan of targets. 
Okay. I, I have problems with quotas. Okay, so targets, not quotas. Mm. Okay. Well, does sugar ever go in English breakfast tea? Never. Never. That's in a strong descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, final question, what do you think of my suit? <laughs> all right, thank you so much. That's all we have time for. I know you have a busy schedule, Your Excellency. I'll take those back. Thank you so much for your time. Great to meet you. Great lovely. to meet you. Great fun. Where'd you get your pantsuit from? I'm just trying to think whether it was a George Gross. This is Johnny Bowden. What do you think? I think it's pretty smart. Yeah, thank I was you. looking at that. <laughs>